All right, here's one of those famous Hickok 534 tube testers. It's laying on its side so you can see it here. This one was actually a parts donor so we could repair his 533 Hickok tube tester. His 533 had been modified and messed with, and when I got it, we had no 83 rectifier tube. That was gone along with the socket, so we had nothing. So this was the donor for both the tube and the socket to get that machine running. So now that we've got that one running, I thought we'd take a look at this one. And of course, I'll move it here, and you, it does not any longer have the 83 tube or the socket. And I thought this might be a good time to try out one of those solid state mods to replace the tube rectifier. And it's one of those mods you can find online. There's several spots where you can pick it up. But it's basically a 10 ohm resistor in each of the filament lines connected together to two diodes, cathodes, into the intersection here and the anodes go out to the plate pins of the rectifier. Now these are supposed to be 10 ohm resistors. I've got 443 ohm wound together to make roughly almost 11, 12 ohms a piece. So that's how I made my 10 ohm resistors because they're supposed to be at least one watt a piece. This arrangement gives me two watts per resistor package. So that's the only reason I did that. So I wired it the way we're supposed to do it. The filament is the heavy wires, as you can see there, the big, thick, black wires. Now, as a precaution, what I did was instead of just running these wires directly to the, cat, uh, the anodes of the, of the diodes, I stuck some alligator clips in there and inserted one amp fuses in series with each diode. That's just as a precaution for what I call the explosion test, which is the initial fire up of the whole system. So here we go. I'm gonna grab the cord, we're gonna plug it in here to the variac. And we're on output. We're gonna bring our voltage up about halfway, about 60 volts, and see what happens. Well, first of all, we're up about 40 volts. I see that the pilot light eh, is just starting to dimly come on. No explosions yet. Good sign. Now we're up just over half power. See, the pilot light is starting to glow. Okay. And nothing's burning, exploding, or fuming back here. That's a very good sign. We're going to go up a little further with the voltage. We're going to go up to 90 volts now. I don't know if you can see that or not. 90 volts. I see we got our filaments running on the on the, the 5Y4 tube. And uh, none of our fuses have blown and nothing's smoldering. So we're going to go up. We're going to go up to full, full voltage and see what's happening. Okay, everything seems to be running fine. We got a pilot light. Of course, my meter is, is dead. That's another problem. I know my fuse is good, I checked it. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at the filament voltage here of this thing. That, as you can see, is 5.4 volts. It should be around five volts. That's So we got that filament working good. Now I'm gonna switch this thing to DC. Let's find out how our rectifier is actually working. I'm going to do a voltage test at the junction of those two diodes right there. And what am I getting? I'm getting 183 volts DC. That's good. That's real good. It looks like it's working. Um, I, got, I have no meter deflection. Those are obviously something else going on. Okay, so after working on this a little bit and taking out my own meter and going through the schematic, which really makes me see double because of all the lines, I did finally discover, if I can show it here, I finally did discover 
that this spool resistor, R48, right there, was open. And that is in series with my meter. With actually my meter switch. That is a 2.9K ohm resistor. I quickly wired together some resistors out of my drawer to approximate 2.9K. Stuck them in there. And now I get meter deflection. Now you'll notice that I get meter deflection when I press the line test button and I can use the uh, line adjust to swing that into where I want to. I don't know if you can see that or not. I could swing that in close this way and that way. It was a little, little tight on this side so I did add a 15 ohm resistor in line with the uh, line adjust rheostat. As you can see over here, I just stuck that in there. I just stuck that in there for now. It's just getting nice and warm, not even hot. So I did read that you would have to compensate perhaps for the power drop of the tube which is figured in in the engineering of this whole thing uh, and of course without the 83 dual rectifier tube you don't have the same voltage drop so I was I was aware that I would probably have to do something like that and that appears to work just fine another thing that I did find was a sketchy another sketchy resistor which was right Right here, this is R8, which I replaced. This is the old one. As you can see, it doesn't look too good anymore. That's the old one. That resistor, R8, is in series with the screen voltage, depending on which button you press here on the front panel. I laid this thing back down temporarily in its case so I could test some tubes. I tested a 12AX7, I tested a Loctal 7Y4, and I did one of these bizarre 83 dual rectifiers with the mercury in it. I'll test it uh, pretty much in line with my B&K Dynajet tube tester, so they look good right now. I've got a uh, 6L6 in here being tested, and I don't know if you can see the meter movement or not, but it's showing just over 5,000 on the scale. But what I want to do here is I went on Google and I looked at the data for the 6L6. I'm going to use the Loctal socket right next to it because it's pretty close. Pretty close in, in uh, configuration. First we'll look at the filament voltage and you can see it's 6.7 I got it set for 6.3 it's a little hot but she's there now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my meter to DC and we're gonna check our screen and our plate pin 8 is the common ground and we're going into pin 3 You'll see that is our plate voltage, and we're up at about 140 volts. Next, we'll check our screen voltage, which is right pin 5. And you'll see here that it is about 124 volts. So that's all. That appears to be all good. I want to do a couple of shout outs to some websites that were very helpful. The Tone Lizard's Hickok Basic Troubleshooting was really helpful. He gives you some preliminary tests you can make to find out if, the, if you have plate voltage, if you have screen voltage, if your filament voltages are working. And if they're not, you can open it up and check the rectifiers directly. There's a couple of quick tests he has that you can look at. And you can even 
uh, figure out whether the bias and or English controls are working properly because I from what I understand they're very difficult to replace <laughs> because you can't get them anymore it was very helpful to help me get this thing done the next site I want to tell you about is Vinyl Saver and I looked at this site because I had quite a bit of extensive information on the 83 dual rectifier tube this big four pin monster mercury filled guy there's only four pins but if you're going to replace it with a solid state mod you have to know a little bit about it very helpful great pictures very in-depth the next site is tube sound and this is where I actually got the diagram for the solid state replacement for the 83 tube he describes it has the pictures the diagrams and everything tells you what you need to do he also warns you that you know you you will have a voltage drop problem because uh, the engineers that designed this thing designed it in with the voltage drop of the 83 tube so you have to add a resistor like the one I did and if all else fails you can't do it you can even buy one from them off of eBay so pretty good site I recommend all three of them if you're gonna be dabbling with this um, takes a little common sense and just a little bit of um, detective work and a lot of these people have done the work for you and posted it on their website most of the information is very accurate and and done in good faith so my uh, salute to all three of those sites that I posted and urge you if you're gonna do do something like this uh, check out those websites and do a little reading first it will help you in the long run make things go smoother so here it is hope you enjoyed it like it if you want <laughs> but I hope it helps Thanks.